art seekers, we're here in North Hollywood with Levi Ponce, one of the most fantastically talented muralists I've come across. Thank you so much for chatting. Can you tell us a little bit about your roots in muralism with your dad and that point of contact that you had with art? My dad's a painter, a sign painter and muralist here in the city of Los Angeles, Hector Ponce, uh, HectorPonce.com. Um, He's been painting his whole life. He's been painting since El Salvador. He started around age 10. He would do uh, little cards for people at cemeteries for them to place over their, their graves. And you know, that calligraphy work turned into drawings and you know, drawings turned into you know, paintings and paintings turned into signs and he developed a career out of it. I was born right into that whole mess of painting and on weekends there were, there were no babysitters, there was no after school programs, none of that shit. It was like, get in the van, we're going to work. So you know, like, at times I hated it, at times I loved it, you know, and Regardless, I was in the van and I was on my way to work every time I wasn't in school and that's when I picked it up, you know, subliminally I was learning the, the tools of the trade, you know, by age 10 I could, you know, hold any job on a paint site. By the time I got to high school, I figured his pay rate wasn't adequate. See, he had given me a raise in middle school to $5 a day. <laughs> <laughs> but in high school, I thought $5 a day was no good and I started poaching his clients so they would call home. <laughs> They'd call home and they'd say, hey, uh, you were looking for Hector, we need a quick sign done over here. And I'd be like, oh, what kind of sign? Of course, you know, forward the message. They're like, oh, we need a no parking sign. And I was like, a no parking sign? Well, my dad probably won't have time for that. It's kind of a small job, but I'm happy to take care of it for you. I'm his son, you know, and, you know, I started poaching his work if I thought I could do it. And I started doing all these little signs, right? And I started making money. Like, all of a sudden, I made $80 on a Saturday instead of $5. I'm like, later, dad. After graduating, I wanted to paint murals. And I wanted to paint it, I wanted to paint murals in Pacoima specifically. The reason I wanted to paint in Pacoima was growing up in LA with my dad, every time we got in the van, it was an adventure of signage, of art, of graffiti, and all sorts of things that, you know, a major city offers. And we just didn't have that out here. So I said, well, why not, right? Like, like let's start it. And there was uh, some murals all over Pacoima. There was murals all over the valley, really, but I felt like none of it had really, n nobody had really brought it. You know what I mean? Like if somebody would paint a mural, commissioned by the city, you know, and that would be that, and somebody would do a school mural because the school wanted a mural, and then that would be that, but I was like, no, 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 like, we're, <laughs> we're bringing it to the people, we're bringing it, so I started with Danny Trejo in December 2011, and I don't know, I never looked back, and we've got murals all over the valley now, and, you know, from Reseda to Canoga Park to Pacoima, and again, just trying to elevate, you know, the stock value when it comes to art on this side of the hill. Something that I think is really fantastic about your work is that you are using muralism as a form of activism to raise awareness to Pacoima mm -hmm. and also to make it a safer community for people who live there already and also to bring in other people who are locals to help you with your design and the execution. I think that's my favorite part is the social work for lack of a better term again like it's social work in the sense that you're not just painting a mural. The mural is the medium for change in the neighborhood that happens at many different levels. Whether it's giving somebody advice on how to get to college, because I went to college, right? So I have access to information, which to me is every day, but this child, you know, much like when I grew up, they didn't have older siblings that went to school. Their parents weren't college educated. They barely spoke English. So it's like, where is this information? You know, just somebody saying there's, oh, there's A through G requirements, you know, meet those and you can apply anywhere. It's like, whoa. These are the interactions that are happening on a wall when we're painting a mural on these sites. We're making a change not just on the wall, we're making a change for the neighborhood. And when I say we, it's everybody involved. You find that you're not only supporting them in their art, you're supporting them in life. Of all of your works in LA, which one is the most significant to you? Uh, the Mona Lisa in Pacoima. Uh, I don't know, I tend to keep personal politics away from things. If my work has a common theme, it's positivity and, you know, I don't know, uplift, inspiration, whatever you want to say. Like, I try and keep it positive. You know, I never put up angry messages, even though, like, I might be angry about something. In this case, the Mona Lisa was just the big finger to the city, because at the time, it was illegal to paint murals. Uh, at the time, I was trying to paint 12 murals on Van Nuys, and at the time, the councilman told me nothing. I never heard back from him. So I went ahead and did it anyways. And the Mona Lisa is a big fuck you to the man. And it says, we're going to fight for what we believe in. In this case, it's arts, and the Mona Lisa represents the artist. Or, you know, represents the artist struggle. And you see her there, ready for battle. She's gonna fight for what she believes in. You know, she's got a sword in hand. You know, a rifle at her back. And you know, again, keep it mellow, keep it happy. You know, she's not sitting there wielding a sword at you know. No, she's smiling. But right? she's her smiling. She's smile. happy. And you know, it's like it's all good and collected. But we're gonna fight this. 
So, you know, Mona Lisa, the Mona Lisa represented, you know, the artist and the artist struggle, particularly here at that time in L.A. when it was illegal to put up any artwork of any kind. Something, ooh, I love that work, too, because the Mona Lisa represents the most iconic, traditional work in the Western lexicon. Mm -hmm. And so what you're doing is saying, hey, muralism in this neighborhood, Pacoima, is significant because we have a Mona Lisa exactly. too. And so you're sort of bridging the gap between the preciousness of the Louvre and the outdoor context of Pacoima. And you'll see that in my work, especially my early work a lot. At the time, you know, the word street art hadn't caught up and a lot of people still saw our work as just vandalism, graffiti, right? Graffiti, oh, that's just graffiti. So I would try and bridge it often by referencing, you know, artworks of, you know, great masters, you know, say, hey, what we're doing here is art. We're not just here, you know, not that there's anything wrong with it, but we're not just here putting our name on the wall, right? So it's art and I try to get it respected as so. Do you think that there's an overall takeaway message of your body of work as a whole? If people gather anything from my work, it's, you know, not so much the art, like there's better painters, like it's, it's more of the act of painting. My work is all self-funded and I do it because I believe in it and it's, I mean, it's the only way I know how to make a difference. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, you know, savvy on the law. I can't fight for someone's immigration rights in court. I'm not, you know, a police officer. I can't go stop crime. I'm not the mayor. I can't. So, you know, I'm a painter. So I'm using what I know to make a difference in my neighborhood. And I feel that if everybody did that, you know, the world would be a much better place.